Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to the course on biostatistics and design of experiments. We will look at uh, full factorial design. Uh, in the previous class, I talked about uh, what is uh, the uh, factor and what is the level. So, let us look at uh, for example, the um, this particular number tells you the level and uh, the exponent tells you the uh, number of factors. Suppose you have uh, 2 raised to the power 1 that is only one factor, okay. you will have 2 experiments here one at low, one at high, right, okay. So, one at low and one at high, the factor A will be done uh, with low level and with high level, okay. So, you will have two experiments done. Suppose, we have two factors like A and B, okay, at two levels, two levels, two factors, two raised to the power 2, uh, that is four experiments, okay. So, we need to do four experiments, run 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, this is one way of representing them, factor A when you put minus 1 that is at low level, uh, when you put it at plus 1 you call it high level. So, factor A at uh, low level, factor B at low level, factor A at high level, factor B at low level, factor uh, A at low level, factor B at high level, factor A at high, B at high. So, this is one way of representing minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Another way of representing these four experiments is like this actually. Uh, we call it 1 that is the base level minus 1, minus 1 and then when you call it small a that means uh, factor a at a higher level, when you call it factor b, uh, factor the factor b is at higher level, when we call a b factor a as well as factor b at higher level. Okay, so, this is one way of representing, this is another way of representing, okay, if you look at only one factor, you know, we will call it uh, the 1 that is lower level and when you say a, small a that means factor a is at higher level. Uh, so, generally we li like this one because we can do lot of things with this. Okay, now, if I want to look at interaction a b, that means uh, temperature pH example I am coming back. So, how do I study interaction a b? All I have to do is multiply these two uh, numbers to get this number. Minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1. Plus 1 into minus 1 is minus 1. Okay. Minus 1 into plus 1 is minus 1. Plus 1 into plus 1 is 1. Okay. You understand? So, um, interaction AB is given like this. This is the column for interaction AB. And this is the main factor A and B this is the interaction a b. So, here you are doing 4 runs and uh, we can get information about the effect of a and the information about effect of b and we can also get effect of interaction a b. How do we get that? Uh, in the previous time I mentioned to you right uh, that if, if I am having a, a results output uh, 4 experimental outputs, if you want to look at the effect of a, I add up um, the results from here, here divided by 2, subtract it from adding up this and this by 2, because this is at higher level, this is at lower level. If you want to look at effect of B, I add up the results from these 2 experiments, divide by 2, subtract it from these 2 experiments divided by 2, that is average. If I want to look at interaction AB, I um, will take the results of this experiment, this experiment, add up, divide by 2 subtract it from the results of this experiment plus this experiment by 2. It is so nice, we can look at the uh, effect of interaction very nicely from this type of factorial experiment. So, that is the beauty of factorial experiment. Okay? And uh, another interesting thing you can see is uh, the number of pluses in this uh, column will be equal to number of minuses. Okay? So, that way you will have a very symmetric, so 2 pluses, 2 minuses, 2 pluses, 2 minuses. So, there is the type of experiments we do also will be symmetric. That means, we will do in equal number of higher level experiments with equal number of lower level experiments. Even for A, B, if you see, you will have 2 pluses, 2 minuses. Okay. 
Now, let us go to a 3 factor experiment that means, I am looking at temperature, pH and dissolved oxygen amount on uh, a producted for example, so A, B, C. So, what will be the de ex design? 2 raised to the power 3, the 2 means 2 level, 3 means 3 parameters. Of course, instead of 2 levels you can also go for 3 level x, 3 levels and so on, we will talk about it later, but uh, the most of these factorials um, experiments we go with the 2 level. So, 2 raised to the power 3 experiments that is 2 into 2 into 2 is 8 runs. So, it is like a cube, okay. A will be at low level and high level, B will be at uh, low level and high level, C will be at low level and high level, 8 runs. So, how do we generate the factor experiment? Look, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, then we put A plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, then for B, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, then A, B, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1. Now, we keep changing C, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1, then all of them are pluses. This is one representation. If you want to represent the other way, you have 1, A, A means level A, uh, factor A is in higher level, uh, B means only factor B is in higher level, A, B means both factor A and B are in higher level, uh, C means factor C is at uh, high level. A C means factor A and C are at high level, B C means factor A, I mean sorry factor B and C are at high level, A B C means factor A, B, C all 3 are at high level. So, we have 8 experiments. Look at this, um, if you look at the column, you will have 4 pluses, 1, 2, 3, 4, you will have 4 minuses. Look at column B, you will have 4 pluses, you will have 4 minuses look at column C, you will have 4 pluses, 4 minuses. So, it is very well balanced. This is called a balanced design. Now, how do we get the interactions? A, B interaction, you multiply A and B column, okay. Minus into minus is plus, plus into minus is minus, minus into plus is minus, plus into plus is plus, minus into minus is plus, plus into minus is minus, minus into plus is minus, plus into plus is plus. So, B, A, C column, A into C, B C is B into C, A B C is all 3 together multiplied. So, minus 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 will give you minus, plus minus minus will give you plus, minus plus minus will give you plus, plus plus minus will give you uh, minus, minus minus plus will give you plus, plus minus plus will give you minus, minus plus plus will give you minus, plus 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 will give you plus. Look at the interaction columns also, so beautiful, you have a 4 pluses, you have 4 minuses. So, it is so balanced, okay. So, the factorial designs are always balanced, okay. Um, so, they are called balanced because you know, if you look at the A effect 2 pluses, 2 minuses, B effect 2 pluses minus and they are also called orthogonal because these interactions are also balanced. Okay, 2 minus is 2 plus. If you go to the previous slide, uh, look at this B C, it has got 4 pluses, 4 minuses. Look at A C, it has got 4 pluses, 4 minuses. So, balanced and as well as orthogonal. So, factorial designs are always like that and it, you have to be very careful when you select it. You should always have a balanced and an orthogonal design. Please remember that. If you do not have a balanced design, that means if you do not have enough plus equal number of pluses and minuses, suppose you pair a design where you have one, more pluses than minus, that means you are doing a biased design where you are trying to look at uh, uh, the performance at higher level, <coughs> okay, which is wrong because any design should be unbiased. So, you should always have a equal number of pluses and minus, that is one thing. Other thing is your interactions also are balanced, okay. So, that way you can study the interactions also in a equal unbiased manner. So, all these designs, the especially the factorial designs are always balanced and orthogonal. So, when you select designs later on, um, you should always uh, look whether your designs are uh, balanced. If it is not, then you have a bias. That means, you are focusing more on one particular uh, uh, um, level of factor rather than and looking at all the factor, all the levels in a uniform way.
okay. So, that is very important when you plan your design. Uh, the balance and orthogonality are very, very important when you perform uh, a uh, strategy of design, okay. Uh, so you can look at interactions as I said, uh, combination of factors. Um, so, we can look at A, B. So, when you develop a regression relation, you will not only have equation uh, terms like this, we will also have terms like A and B. We looked at it long time back, okay, temperature and pH and so on actually. Okay, so, several factors will become significant, sometimes two factor interactions may be significant, but three factor interactions might not be significant at all, very rare. You will not have a situation where temperature, pH and uh, agitator RPM uh, interacting with each other, but you can have situation where temperature and pH may be interacting, pH and uh, agitator RPM may be interacting. For example, when I increase agitator RPM may be I am dispersing the material better. So, the pH is more uniform and so on. So, pH, so two factor interactions are generally possible, but three factors and four factors are very, very rare. You need to keep uh, that point in mind. It does not happen every day, okay. It does not happen at all in most of the situation. So, main factors will be significant, two factor interactions will be significant, okay. Uh, so, but there are, there are drawbacks of this full factorial design, like uh, it is 2 raised to the power n right. So, n is 1 means 2 experiments, 2 means 4 experiments, 3 means 8 experiments, 4 means 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 4 16, 5 means 32 like that it keeps on increasing actually you know it is a huge. Um, imagine if I am doing a 15 parameters factors 2 raised to the power 15 that is a huge number of experiments now that would not do at all. So, there is something called fractional factorial design. We will look at fractional factorial design in more detail as we go along, but fractional factorial designs are fractions of these main full factorial design. You can have half fractional factorial that means you will do half of the full factorial, you can have one fourth of full factorial, you can even have one eighth of full factorial. So, you will do much less number of experiments like half, one four, one eight, but you lose out on some other parameter we will talk about it later on but uh, the number of experiments go down if you are doing half or one fourth of the full factorial experiment, okay. okay. So, this figure tells you as you keep on uh, increasing the factors it keeps on going up, okay. so that is not a very good idea to do actually. Okay. Uh, so, the, if you do a full factorial for example, if you take two factors uh, like A and B, you are doing four experiments. So, you are looking at main effects of A main effect of B that is two main effects and we can also study the interaction A B that is called a second order interaction. Suppose you have three factors A B C there are three main effects okay then you can have three second order interaction A B A C A C and you can also have a third order interaction A B C. If you look at four variables or parameters or factors A B C D you will have main effects A, B, C, D, then you will have six two way interactions like A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, C, D that is six. You can have four three way interactions A, B, C, A, B, D, B, C, D, uh, A, C, D and so on you will have four and there will be one four way A, B, C, D like that it goes right. So, you in many situations you will end up having very large number of interactions and um, as I said it is very very rare to have a three way interaction. So, um, it is very rare that means that this portion is actually useless. We are doing too many experiments and um, we are not going to any way look at uh, uh, three level or higher level interactions higher order interactions okay. that means we are doing too many experiments. Look at box he said there tends to be a redundancy in full factorial design because this is a redundancy because three level or three way interactions are very rare. Okay. That is why it is always good to do fractional factorial designs to exploit this redundancy. Like I said fractional factorial if you do a half fractional factorial we will be doing half of a full factorial or if you are doing one fourth. Uh, full factorial that means that could be a one fourth uh, fractional factorial design um, because 
nobody is interested in three way or four way or five way interaction that is very very rare. So, all these uh, uh, portion is all redundant. So, all these experiments are waste you know that is why it is better to always do a fractional factorial design and as you know it is always everybody likes to do less number of experiments because of time constraint because of resource constraint and um, but with less number of experiments we should be able to get as much information especially the main effects and the the main interactions okay the two um, factor interactions a b a c a d b c b d these are the things we are interested in if it is a b c d we are interested in main effects like a b c d and then we are interested in a b a c a d b c b d c d we are not interested in a b c that is very rarely going to happen so such is not generally uh, observed in many situations that is why one goes about doing something called the fractional factorial studies how do you go about selecting a fractional factorial let's look at it in very systematic way uh, if you go to screening designs like i said um, initially you may select large number of parameters uh, and uh, you perform some experiments um, so in that screening design you are interested to identify which are the critical parameters which are noise parameters eliminate the noise take only the critical and spend more time so in screening designs we take large number of factors we are more interested in only main effect we are not even interested in interaction so in screening design we will perform only few experiments get the main effects and then take only few important ones and then go and do a detailed design okay that's called screening design so there are many types of screening designs uh, one is called the plaquette berman design the other one is called the resolution 3 fractional factorial design i will talk about what are these actually you know these are some uh, screening designs which are used to just screen large number of parameters or factors eliminate quickly which are which you think is not necessary um, by doing minimum experiments and select only those which are very critical and then do a detailed study that is what is screening design is all about actually we will spend more time on this plaquette berman design and resolution 3 design later on um, so uh, generally the um, screening designs involves a lot of fractional factorial designs Okay, let us look at uh, uh, a simple um, picture imagine I have three parameters or factors A, B, C. So, 2 raised to the power 3 design that means 8 experiments. So, how do I change minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So, each one I am changing to minus 1 to plus 1. So, the last experiment will be plus 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 you understand. How do we get A, B? this into this minus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus minus minus plus minus minus plus 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 so look at here you need to always cross check whether the um, balance is there the number of negatives equal to number of positives and then orthogonality the interactions also there are four positives four negatives four positives four negatives like that Okay, now I want to go into a fractional factorial design imagine I want to introduce one more factor A B C was by um, say uh, the pH temperature and carbon but actually I want to study pH temperature carbon and nitrogen. So, 2 power 4 will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 16 experiments I do not want to do 16 experiments I want to do only 8 experiments and get a lot of data. So, what do I do I take this design matrix and do a fractional factorial to involve d also ok. Now, where do I put d here that is the question do you understand um, I have four factors or parameters a b c d temperature pH uh, carbon nitrogen uh, if I have to do a full factorial design it will become 2 raised to the power 4 that is 16 experiments, but I do not want to do 16 experiments I want to do only 8 experiments that is half of 2 raised to the power 4 or 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1. So, one of them I want to make it D. So, generally you take the highest order interaction that means A, B, C uh, as I said before uh, people generally see these first order interaction, but never second order interaction. So, you call this D 
So, your design will be only 8 experiments, 4 factors. A will be like this, A is modified uh, like this, B is modified like this, C is modified like this and D is modified like this. So, if I have temperature, um, pH, carbon, nitrogen, 4 factors, instead of doing 16 experiments, I am doing half of 16. So, I will have only 8 experiments. So, I take the design matrix for 8 experiments A, B, C and then I will put the A, B, C, A into B into C as D. So, I will change D in this fashion. Okay, now, the question is there is a catch. What will happen? You have already have certain interactions A, B, A, C, B, C. What will happen to D involved? What will happen to A, D? What will happen to B, D? What will happen to C, D? When you do that, you find AB is same as CD. AB I said uh, minus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus uh, minus minus plus minus plus into minus minus plus minus um, okay, so plus minus minus plus 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 plus. Now if you look at CD minus minus plus 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 minus plus minus plus minus 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 plus minus plus minus 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 plus 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 plus. So, A B looks exactly like C D. Same thing I can show that B D looks exactly like A C. Same thing I can show A D looks exactly like B C. And also A looks exactly like B C D just like D looks exactly like A B C. A looks exactly like B C D, B looks exactly like A C D, C looks exactly like A B D. Okay? And this design is of course, 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 because uh, I have A B C D as 4 parameters, I am doing only instead of 16 experiments, 8 experiments. So, I am doing 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1. Okay? So, what has happened here? I am able to do uh, away with instead of 16 experiments, only 8 experiments, but some of these factors are confounded. New term I am using, some of the factors are confounded. A B will look like C D, A C will look like B D, B C will look like A D. So, I will not be able to differentiate uh, between A B and C D. I will not be able to AC, differentiate A C and B D. I will not be able to differentiate B C and A D. And of course, I will not be able to differentiate D against A B C. So, I will not be able to differentiate A against B C D, B against A C D, C against A B D. Okay? So, these ha have been confounded. Okay? These two level interactions have been confounded and the principal effects or uh, main effects are confounded with uh, these three parameter, three factor interaction. You understand? So, these two factors interactions are confounded with two factor interactions and the main effects or main factors are confounded with uh, these three factor interactions. So, some information is lost, but what has happened? I have reduced the number of experiments instead of doing 16 experiments that is 2 raised to the power 4 that is 4 factors A, B, C, D, I have reduced it by half. So, this is called a 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 design, 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 is 2 raised to the power 3 which is 8 experiment. But in the bargain what has happened? Some interactions are confounded, A, B interaction is confounded with C, D, A, C interaction is confounded with B, D. B C interaction is confounded with A D. That means, I will not be able to differentiate whether if some change is there, is it because of A D and or B C, whether it is because of A C or B D, because of A B or C D. Same thing for the main effects also, they are confounded with three factor interaction and uh, that is not a big problem because generally we do not observe any three factor interacting. So, whatever change we see because of main effect, we are sure that it is because of the main effect only. You understand? So, we have lost some information which is not of very big significance unless there is some problem here. 
um, AC the two level interactions are confirmed that unless you think there is going to be some important uh, uh, knowledge lost otherwise this is a very good sort of a screening design for four parameters or four factors instead of doing 16 experiments I am doing only 8 experiments ok. And this is called a 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1 fractional factorial design. So, number of runs is equal to 2 raised to the power k minus q this 2 is the number of levels um, your k is the number of uh, factors q is 1 then uh, say in the previous case 2 4 minus 1. Uh, so, that is a half instead of 16 experiments I am doing 8 experiments if q is 2 uh, indicates quarter ok extra q factors are alleged with higher order we will talk about it later. Uh, so, this is called a 2 k minus q or 2 4 minus 1 design this is a half fractional factorial design for 4 parameters. So, instead of 16 experiments I am doing only 8 experiments in this particular case ok. Now, let us look at uh, 6 factors x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6 ok. Now, um, imagine first I start with the, the design matrix for x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 that is 4 parameters 2 raised to the power 4 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 16 experiments understand. So, I write down these 16 experiments these are the 16 experiments I write down ok and then I can write down the interactions x 1 into x 2, x 1 into x 3, x 1 into x 4, x 2 into x 3, x 2 into x 4 ok then x 3 into x 4 then 3 level x 1, x 2, x 3 and like that like that it goes. Now, I want to introduce 2 more factors x 5 and x 6 ok. Now, where do I introduce? The problem is I could introduce in different places right, I could introduce in different places the x 5 and x 6. So, this if I introduce this x 5 and x 6 that is 2 raised to the power 6 minus 2 that is a quarter fraction design right instead of uh, 6 2 into 2 into 2 6 time 4 8 16 32 64 experiments I am doing only 16 experiments that is a quarter fraction of 64 experiments 2 raised to the power 6 minus 2 fractional factorial design do you understand. Uh, so, do I introduce x 5 here that is x 5 is equal to x 2 x 3 x 4 and s 6 is equal to x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4. Then if I multiply x 5 by x 6 what will happen that will become x 1 this is very dangerous what it means is uh, the principal effect x 1 is confounded with their two way interaction x 5 and x 6. Ideally, uh, we always said that uh, principal effects should interact have an interaction with more than um, two factors at least at least three factors or more then that is a good design whereas, here it is interacting with two factors that is not a very good design at all. So, what do we do? We need to look at some other columns. So, that the principal effects will have a confounding only with the three factors ok. Ok, now if you look here x 1, x 2, x 3 put it as x 5 and x 2, x 3, x 4 put it as x 6 then x 5 into s x 6 will become x 1 into x 4 ok. So, there is only a uh, two factor interactions ok. Unlike the previous case where x 1 is interacting with the two factor x 1 is a principal effect right whereas, here two factors are interacting with two factors. So, this design looks good. So, you need to think about how to select the column in which you want to put in your new parameter or new factor or new x or new variable. So, that you do not end up a situation like this ok where a two factors uh, interacting with the principal effect or main factor whereas, uh, two factor can interact with two factor like this. So, uh, this happens in this type of situation where you can have uh, the new variables um, and the ch uh, choice is either out of these 5 how to select uh, 2 of them ok. When you selected these 2 they are not good. So, what did you do? You selected these 2 ok. So, that is how you get your 
design done actually. So, let us uh, continue more on this uh, um, fractional factorial design. Um, I introduced the terminology called confounding. So, we have uh, these uh, factors confounding. In some situations, we have uh, uh, three factors confounding with the principal effect or main factor, which is allowed, but uh, uh, you do not want a main effect or main factor confounding with the uh, two factor interaction, um, but it can confound with three factor interaction. Okay? So, x 1 can confound with x 2 into x 3 into x 4, but x 1 should not confound with x 2 x 3, but two factors can be confounding with each other okay? like here x 5 into x 6 can confound with x 1 into x 4 or in the other situation uh, B C is confounding with A D, B D is confounding with A C, C D is confounding with A B. Okay, in this problem there was no problem we could put D exactly here whereas, in this problem um, these two factors or two F uh, parameters could be put in any place because there is a lot of choice here do you understand. And uh, the selection of the correct column will depend upon um, which factors get confounded. Okay. So, we will con continue on this uh, concept of uh, uh, fractional factorial designs and confounding in the forthcoming classes. Thank you very much.